In the name of God the Merciful, the Beneficent, thanks be to God Almighty. God's peace and prayers be upon Muhammad and upon his family and companions. Lord, relieve my mind and ease my task for me, and untie the knot from my tongue, so that they may understand my speech. I greet you in the name of Islam, so peace and God's mercy be upon you. Welcome to another episode of the program, Revolution of Man. He who revolts against his reality, against a history which may be in a bad way, against human struggles, against demonic desires, against evil whispers which can appear in his mind and resents and stops bad deeds so that he can stand with righteousness and stand a courageous hero stand. All of us at some point in time need a revolution in order to walk down the path of righteousness and to reach God Almighty safely. Every one of us has worries about the future, the future of our children. He would like to gather a little amount of money and have a fortune which he uses to build a future for his children. And says, if I pass away in any moment, I have to leave something behind for my children. But I have a question. Do you trust in the sustenance or in the provider? There are many people who like having funds and they think that the existence of these funds ensures the life of their children in the future and I say that you're wrong you have to have a fortune for yourself instead of trusting the fortune that is in your hands that doesn't last our trust has to be for the mighty provider we were raised as Muslims and we learned that arms are important when the Muslim's father was a good man the grandchildren and their children are the ones who benefit because if the grandfather or father was a good person, God Almighty simplifies their life and helps them. Whoever saves a fortune for their children has good fathers and grandfathers. It's not wrong that every one of us has a plan for the future. To gather some money for the future, your children's future, your family's future and your grandchildren's future. But what is wrong is to put the money you gathered for your children as your priority and to forget God Almighty. What is wrong is to say that so my children's future is secure because they have money. The correct thing is to say that there is a great God who takes care of all living things. That means that whilst money is important, it's also important to understand that it's God Almighty that will provide you with the sustenance that you need. Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, may God be pleased with him, when he was on his deathbed and in his last moments and last breaths, his family were gathered around him and they were discussing and reminding about things, bad things as well, which can guide people to evil. Some of those present told him, Commander of the believers, leave something for your children after you die. You are now in the last stages of life and will soon approach God and leave this earth. Sign a few signatures and save your children. Leave your children a mighty fortune. He replied, I swear I wouldn't leave anything for them if they were sinners, so that they can continue to use it to do sin. If they were good, God will make them rich from his might. I'm not saying that you have to become like Omar ibn Abdul Aziz. I'm giving you an example. Did Omar's children get lost in life? No, they didn't. The sons of Omar didn't lose their grip on life after his death because God left them his messenger. And before him, who did the same thing? Abu Bakr al-Sadiq. He was asked, what did you leave for them? He answered that he left them God and his messenger. He gave away all his money to charity and he left them with God Almighty. So his sons grew up to be very rich people because of God Almighty. What I want from you today, today's revolution, is to rebel against your monetary savings that are beyond your needs and for you to give alms. Today's revolution is led by Talha ibn Abdullah, who was a very successful merchant in Medina. His fortunes were great and his trades were big, but Talha didn't trust money. He trusted the God of money. There is a big difference in putting your trust in the creation and the creator. The money that you own enters many pockets before you and it leaves their pockets and enters yours and it will also leave your pocket and enter other people's pockets however God is always alive and whoever fears God has an escape 
and gives and receives fortune from places he doesn't expect. I'm not telling you to sit in your house and not to have any money or not to save some money. And I'm not telling you to hide your money for a bad day. We have to prioritize. And when you're setting your priorities, let God be your highest priority. Don't place your trust in the reasons to save money, but in the Lord of Lords who grants fortunes to whoever he wants and takes it away from whoever he wishes. He also humiliates whoever he wants. Today's revolution is about how the customs we know, the one that says you are what you own. You have a thousand, then you're equal to a thousand. And if you have 10,000, then you're equal to 10,000 in society. This is not the way of Islam. It's not the way we were raised and it's not within our customs or within our morals. Today's revolution, which is led by Tahla ibn Abdullah, may God be pleased with him, was not a poor person because we would say so if he was. Today's revolution is not with an easy and simple man. It's with a man who barely makes ends meet. Our revolution is not with a man who's simple and humble. Our revolution's leader owns thousands and thousands of gold coins with evidence that his trading deal in one day in that blessed time, the time of the prophet from only one country, from the Islamic countries, from only one trade, 700,000 dirham. All of this in one day, not a simple and easy man. And in our language, he is heavy and the owner of a large fortune. But this man did not put his hopes in money. He didn't depend entirely on the fortune that he was earning. But what he did was to put his faith in the God of money. And it wasn't his aim or ambition to pile up huge numbers of money either. The problem with today's merchants and wealthy people is that they need a fortune and they need a revolution as well. The fortune is for extending your fortune and to get blessed by God. But you need a revolution while owning this money against the greed that you've got inside of yourself and to rebel against your trust in the money and to trust in God Almighty. And there's a difference between a man who trusts in a slave and another who trusts in a king. Today's merchants' problems is that they pile up money and it becomes nothing more than a number in the bank. You'll eat with one stomach, you'll sleep on one mattress and on one bed, and your money gets more and more, and the number of poor people increases and increases. We have a saying in the Sharia that every hungry person in need opposes a greedy rich person. When you find a poor person in the street begging in order to get the basic food for living, when you see a university student who's unable to pay his tuitions, when you see a widow or an orphan, a little boy or girl who's unable to pay for curing his or her illnesses or the electricity or water bill, they are unable to find money for clothes. When you see these sights, the problems of the Muslims, their hunger and bareness, know that every hungry in need opposes a greedy rich person who prevents the money from reaching the needy because the money for the needy is currently in the hands of the rich people. But the problem is that the rich people justify their actions by saying the money is mine for my son and my grandsons and that I earned this by staying up all night and by working hard. I don't want to give this money to charity. They forgot that the money they're hanging on to was provided to them by God Almighty. God Almighty told you that I will give you a thousand, but every thousand I give you has 25 which are not yours and deliver them to their poor owner. Each time you see the tragic sight of Muslims, every time you see a hungry person, every time you see a famine, every time you see people who are unable to have shelter, every time you see someone needy or like an old man begging, when you see a handicapped person who's extending his arm to beg, to get bread, to live, when you see a sight that calls for your good-heartedness and generosity, Know that the prophet cries before you do. When you see a tragic sight which isn't supposed to be seen in our Islamic countries, know that there is a greedy, rich person. And if you are, or maybe know one of those rich people who has lost sight of what the money is for and aren't complying to help and fight for the rights of the poor, 
who forgot to mention the name of God Almighty who gave them their money, remember that they will face judgment and their behaviour could lead them to the fires of hell. This is what you're saving for yourselves, so you will not taste what you made others taste. No one tells you that you shouldn't have any money, but Islam teaches you and tells you not to put all of your faith in money. Be like Talha ibn Abdullah, may God be pleased with him, who's the leader of today's revolution. We'll stay with his story and we will see how Talha rebels and his wife supported him. He wasn't alone, his wife was rebelling with him against the love of owning and money and possessions and he gave the money to the poor. Let's see the story of Talha ibn Abdullah who rebelled against storing money after this break. We'll be back with more on the story. Welcome back to the program Revolution of Man and today's revolution is led by Talha ibn Abdullah who rebels against the love of saving and hoarding money. One day he received 700,000 dirhams from a trade with the people of Hadramut. The money arrived and we can't say exactly for sure the extent of Talha ibn Abdullah's happiness. He slept the night tossing and turning and feeling sad so his wife saw him unable to sleep and she said what is it why can't you sleep we must be angering you by something notice his good wife the first thing she was concerned about was the way that she may have upset him by doing something maybe i behaved in a manner that didn't please you maybe i said a word that came out in a way that offended you what is it how have i angered you so he said you didn't anger me in anything. I was blessed with a good woman. You really are the best of the best. So the question remains, what's keeping you awake? So he answered, today I received money from Hadramud. What does the Lord think of his worshipper if he sleeps at night with 700,000 dirhams in his home and the hungry Muslims are starving? How do I look in front of God? What's my position in the hands of God? Now God looks at me sleeping in my home with a fortune of 700,000 dirhams and the Muslim women and children are starving and there are Muslims who don't have shelter and are cold and I keep 700,000 dirhams in my home? What does the Lord think of his worshipper? How does God look down on me? Where should I hide my actions from God? I am piling up money while the Muslims are starving. I'm counting money and assets and building upon my trade and my fortune and the Muslims are hungry. But notice where his wife stood. The man revolted against his love of money and he found someone to support him. He found a wife. She didn't tell him to sleep and to forget about the things he was talking about. She didn't tell him that this is the fortune of our children and your effort. You traveled and migrated several times. You left us several times. No, she didn't tell him this. She said, I will support you. She swore that dawn does not break until we divide the money into portions and you send it to the Muslim poor. Notice how good his wife was. Look at the support he had at home. He found a good wife who supported and believed in him. So the leader of the revolution was Talha and the assistant for the leader was his wife, the wife of Talha ibn Abdullah. He had found a truly good and wonderful wife. Women of Islam, if you see your husband not giving money to charity for a whole month, encourage him to do so. Giving to charity saves you from dying as a sinner. Charity recovers the Muslim ill. Help your patience with charity. Whoever has a need from God, when we spend all day begging God for help, give money to charity before confronting God with your request. The slave comes on judgment day under the shade of money he gave to charity. So anyone who is able to enlarge his shade, then so be it. You gave a dinar, you gave part of your money, and the shade of judgment day will be on the amount you gave to charity. My brothers, let's build a shade for us in heaven, not only to fit yourself, but your wife, your son, and your daughter. Teach your children to give to charity. When a mother wakes up in the morning to send her son to school, prepare a sandwich for him. Make two for him. Tell him that one is for him and the second is to find one of your friends who forgot his sandwich or his mother didn't wake up to give it to him. If you see a hungry friend, 
give him that sandwich. This is not the way a mother acts. A mother tells her son when he leaves the school, take care of your sandwich. Don't allow any of your friends to fool you and take it away from you. And the son returns from school. He's lost his mathematics book, but he's held on to the sandwich. He's lost his ruler, but he's still got that sandwich. He lost his pencil and held on to the sandwich. And we lost Jerusalem and we held on to the sandwich. I wish mothers taught their children to hold on to Jerusalem like holding on to a sandwich. And he went back home with his sandwich as his first priority. This is not the Muslim way. Muslim teachings say that spend and God will spend on you. Muslim teachings say that charity is important and that part of your money must go to charity. Muslim teachings say that to heal your patients, heal them with charity. Muslim teachings say that giving to charity in secret calms down God's wrath like water extinguishes fire. Have you ever seen when a fire starts and then water is poured upon it, God's anger goes away when you give money to charity in secret? Do you want a seat between the hands of God Almighty? Do you want the shade of the throne of the merciful? Do you want to be the person who gives charitably in secret so that God's wrath is calmed down and you know that what you've done is the right thing? You give to charity in secret and you spend like that as well. When you're going to the mosque on Friday and you see beggars sitting, don't say that they're liars. Give your son even if a small amount of money and tell him to give it to charity. Not because you doubt the beggar. Maybe you don't trust the beggar. But that's not the point. The point is to raise the quality of giving to charity and to encourage your children to give to charity. Talha ibn Abdullah and his wife, may God be pleased with them both, revolted against their love for money, greed and materialism and piling up money because they have seen hungry Muslim children. If every Muslim that was rich slept in his bed, but when he rested his head on the pillow and asked himself a question, I have credit worth millions, my numbers are increasing, I have a bank that sends me messages, thanks, gifts and agendas to keep me one of its clients. How many needy people send messages to God? How many oppressed send messages to God? O oh Lord, I am oppressed. May you be victorious. How many women have sad hearts because they are widows and she has children that are starving? And you, a rich man, your credit is getting bigger and her worries are getting bigger as well. Your money increases and her concerns are increasing. When her children grow a little older, her worries grow with them. One loaf of bread used to be enough for them when they were young. But today they've grown and every one of them needs a loaf just for themselves. Children become older and worries increase along with that. And you're sleeping on a comfortable mattress made of silk under air conditioning. You also have your servants and your suite. Your stomach is full and so is your pocket with money. But your heart lacks mercy and compassion. Don't be one of those people. Don't be one of the people whose hearts lack any compassion. Give your money to charity and buy yourself a seat between the hands of God Almighty and say, God, I want to free myself like our Lord, Ali. He lived in an era which contained needy people. He went to the market and asked about the slaves and asked for the price of the most expensive slave. He was answered that the most expensive slave in the market is 10,000 and was told that he is the son of the daughter of the prophet of God. If I were a slave, I would be four times that. I'm worth 40,000 dirhams in the market. So he got out 40,000 dirhams from his pocket in one day and said, I buy my neck from you so that you don't send me to hell. He bought himself four times, each time valuing himself with a price. He gave them to charity and freed himself from God Almighty. Be like Ali ibn al Hussein. Be the leader of our revolution today. Talha ibn Abdullah and his faithful wife. Be supportive and stand next to your husband. When he has the intention of giving charity, encourage him and increase the amount of money. God Almighty spends on whoever spends and doesn't spend on whoever is greedy. Lord, make us immune to greed. Make us one of the ones who revolt against our fortunes and greedy instincts. You are able to do everything. Until we meet again, I bid you farewell and God's blessings and peace be upon you.